the hunt for the next MasterChef Ireland champion has begun. Out of 24 amateur cooks who competed in the heats, only 10 remain. We do have quite a few headstrong people in the final 10. Who are the threats and who seems to be the bigger contenders? High standards are expected. You're a serious contender in this competition. To be in the final 10, that's unreal. We need to get this out now, the customer's waiting. I'm not gonna lie, I would love to win. I expect more from you, because I do think you have something. What other people do doesn't really affect me. I need to just do what I do as best I can. Only one can become MasterChef Champion 2014. As a reward for yesterday's performance, Neve and Diana were given the day off by Nick and Dylan. Now the remaining contestants have one last chance to show that they deserve the MasterChef apron. It's very hard to verbalise how much you want it because it's such a strong feeling, but I have my apron with my name on it um, and I'm not letting go. You know, I've got faith in my own ability. I'm a good cook and I don't really want to go home. We're going to have to cook out of our skins to keep our aprons today. Pressure's really on. Based on a wealth of Irish national classics, we want you to enhance and refine a dish that shows us what Ireland means to you. A country's national cuisine showcases its culture and tradition. At the end of today, two of you will be going home. With their place in the competition at stake, eight amateur cooks now have 90 minutes to prove themselves to Nick and Dylan. From the start, I've always said, I need to just do what I do as best I can. And if it's not good enough, the only person I can blame is myself. Hi, Charlie. Hello, how are you? How are you feeling? Good, yeah. I'm doing a uh, carrageen moss pudding, like a, an Irish panna cotta, really. Oh, so it's a panna cotta? It. So it's a milk pudding, yes. OK, so you're, you're making a panna cotta, and rather than using gelatin, you're setting it with? With carrageen. Which, of course, is native to Ireland. It comes dried, mm -hmm. and that just gives off a natural setting edge. Okay. Because it's a natural product, there is a yeah. little bit of a margin for error with how it's going to set. Okay. Cool. OK, good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Charlie. It seems achievable. Mm. I'm hoping that, that carrageen sets well for him, that it doesn't underset it or overset it. Hi, Nick. So tell us. Yeah, it's actually well, it's going to be a braised Irish stew. It's quite the challenge, eh? Is it going to be ready? I think so, yeah. OK, cool. There's a huge amount of work to be done, but that's yeah. what I want, to, I want to push myself here. What's in the stew? The lamb cut, um, it's just going to have some onion, um, some, some leek, some garlic, um, some shallots. OK, well, we'll leave it to it. I have a funny feeling that we're in for a treat. Yeah, and I think dish. he's pushing himself, which yeah. is fair enough, because we have seen some brilliance there. Yeah. At this stage in MasterChef, you have to make life difficult for yourself. It should be a fine line between success and failure. Um, you've got 90 minutes, and I think it's important you, you spend every minute of them just you know, working as hard as you can. Really do want to move forward in the competition and really try and learn. I just need to believe in myself, stay focused, and hopefully I can. Are we getting on all right? Right. And I'm going to do like a deconstructed kind of version of a cuddle. Sounds cool. Oh, okay, so you're putting your own yeah, twist yeah, on it. Okay, yeah, well, it'll be yeah. very interesting to see that. This I'm doing it. venison sausages. Good. And why have you chose venison, Sonia? Um, just to try and reinvent it. Yeah, cool. And, and I'm serving it with tripe. Nice, yeah. So, tripe. Tripe. Dip yeah. it in egg and then bread comes and deep fry it quickly. In little strips, strips or in yeah, strips? Yeah, little strips. Brilliant. Yeah. Sounds gorgeous. She's not only given us cuddle, she knows that the cuddle is all soft and she's given us an extra crunchy texture. Yeah. She's thought it through. She's thought it through, yeah, exactly. The cooking side of things. It sort of gets out of control. And part of my personality is I just get absorbed in these projects and it just spirals and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. How are you? Busy. I can see that. Right, so tell us, shoot. I'm going to do like a modern version of apple crumble. Basically a deconstruction. So what I'm doing is taking three different uh, apples with three different properties. So you're using cooking apples? Yes, no, that's going to be a compote mixed with cream and put into a caramel tube. Wow. 
and then I'm going to pan fry some of these Brayborn apples, but I'm going to just pan fry those as little balls. Uh, I'm also doing a Granny Smith sorbet, then I'm doing a brown butter powder. I'm also doing a custard. I've got an oatmeal ice cream going there. It was like ice cream porridge and a granola. <laughs> the list goes on. Yeah. Well, you need all the time you can get, so we're going to leave you to it. Thank you. Thanks, you. Thanks. He's very confident. He's very sure. If this falls down, then it comes across as overambition without the talent. Yeah. If he executes it, he's going to show us what a serious contender he is. So for me, he makes today very interesting. Hopefully, they'll see that I have a good feel for ingredients and that I can produce a good dish under pressure. Hello. How so are what you? are you doing? I am uh, making my take on tea and tart. Explain that. Um, I am making a tea-infused ice cream. So I'm making it with tea and Jemison whiskey, which uh, my house was never without growing up. Then I'm making kind of a more refined apple tart. So I'm doing very thin layers of puff pastry. When you put the fork on it, it should kind of crack under the weight of the fork, hopefully. And some caramelised apple Sounds on lovely. that. Yeah, Sounds really nice. So. Yeah. 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 Nick will love this. No, I, 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 I do know that. I've got a sweet tooth. <laughs> that works well for me. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you. I love the sound of the whiskey and tea oh, ice cream. I love the sound of it. It's impressive. Really impressive. At 30 minutes in, she got an hour left. For me, this is huge, being a master chef. Even if I don't go much further, I hope that this will teach me to, to put myself out there a bit more in, in the rest of my life. So tell me, what uh, Irish dish are you doing today? I'm doing um, cider braised um, rabbit legs with rabbit loin wrapped in streaky bacon and an apple and hazelnut um, kind of crumble. Sounds delicious. Sounds lovely, Mark. Hopefully it will be. And you've chosen two parts of the rabbit. One is the loin yeah. and the leg. So you're going to cook them differently, of course, then, yeah? Yeah. OK. Your leg is braised. The leg is braised, yeah. Let's see. Wow. wow. Beautiful. So it's um, flavoured with um, juniper berries, right. uh, thyme, bay right. leaf, some apple cider, and then some root veg. Good man. Thanks very much. In terms of the competition, so long as I do the best that I can, I'll be happy. And whenever that finishes, then that's, that's fine with me. We're cooking a fry for us today. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's my Posh take. Posh fry. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to try to get my custards into the oven. Uh, an egg custard infused with bacon. So you get the bacon and egg with the pudding crumble on top. Take the sausage apart and kind of crisp up little bits. And then I'm making um, soda bread to make toast on the side. So you kind of have the main elements of a fry, but it's kind of hot OK. Bread. Well, it, it sounds very it? interesting okay. and very Irish, so well done. Thanks, Emil. Thanks. OK, guys, an hour is gone. You have half an hour left. When I cook, I just like to cook the food really well. I just like that. My passion, I guess, to come out on the plate. Hey, Rich. How are you? Grant. Yeah. Uh, today I'm going to do a roast rack of Wexford lamb. Yep. I'm going to do a slight take on champ. And instead of um, bacon and cabbage, I'm doing a cabbage pancetta and chorizo tartlet with a red wine and rosemary reduction. Wow. It's quite a lot there, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I've tried it at home yep. a million times. Okay. The flavours work really well. You're going to concentrate on seasoning today? Yep. Tasting everything, yes. Yep, yep, happy with that. Good luck, Rich. Cheers. Cheers. This is going to make or break Richard today. Yeah. Richard is one of those people who really has to pull it off today, in my opinion. No, completely. Coming up next. For me, if we're going to do these deconstructed dishes, they need to be better than the original. The brief was something Irish, and this is something else. I like a shade of beige. <laughs> Tonight, Nick and Dylan have challenged eight of the contestants to create a modern Irish national dish. And when the cooking stops, two will leave the competition for good. Just two minutes left. Guys, 
Time is up. Will you please stop cooking and step away from your workstations? Okay, Nick, bring up your dish. Nick has cooked a contemporary take on Irish stew with herb-crusted loin of Connemara Hill lamb, celeriac puree, and a Colcannon Dauphin was. A lot going on in the dish, a lot of work. So I was very interested to see how you get on. The problem I do have more than anything is, is the Irish stew. If you're gonna call it a stew, it can't be dry, it needs moisture. So if we're gonna call it Irish stew, it still needs to be soupy to some degree. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I think you should have concentrated on the flavor and then figure out the artwork afterwards. Thanks, Nick. It wasn't perfect, so I've got every chance of going home. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how I worked, and I worked pretty much from the first second to the, the last minute, so um, no regrets. Nessa, would you like to come up, please? Nessa has chosen to update the traditional full Irish breakfast, making a bacon and egg custard with black pudding crumb, crispy sausage and tomato sauce. I knew there was a problem with the custard and turning it out, so yeah, I, I mean, I did my best with what I had, but it wasn't quite what I imagined when I started out. It's actually not a bad idea, I have to say. Um, because when you were explaining it to me, I was a bit confused, really, how it was going to sort of turn out. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's kind of an intriguing little dish because, forgive me, but it looks terrible. <laughs> um, but it eats well. Mm. And the reason that it eats well, it actually does have every bit of familiarity of a fry. It's all of those flavours in your mouth. Thanks Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> how was it? Um, kind of. Okay, I suppose, like... There's nothing I regret about the last hour and a half. I did that dish to the best of my ability. So if it's not good enough, it's because other people are better than me, and that's it. Charlie hopes his carrageen moss pudding with Irish coffee sauce, coffee bean tweel, and crumble sand will earn him a place in the next stage. Happy, Charlie? I am happy, yeah. Okay. When I tasted the panna cotta, I was worried if it was a little bit bland, but eating it together, it works very well, because this is quite sweet, and the coffee's a lovely dimension. I think the tuile is lovely. It's a very accomplished dessert. Yeah, what I like about this dish is that you've kept it simple. Well done. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. So getting positive comments about something, um, you know, that's the, that's the best part of the competition. I sit now and hope that I did do enough. Idel, if you'd like to come up, please. I did as well as I could, I think, in the time, so it's just up to Nick and Dylan whether they like it enough. Idel's put a new twist on tea and tart, making an apple tartlet, caramelised apple, tea and whiskey infused ice cream, white chocolate shavings, and a cream liqueur. You happy? Uh, reasonably happy, yeah. It's not that colourful. Yeah. I like. Yeah, Cut it's all... plates to lift up and look at me and go, eat me. Yeah. I think there's too many nuts. It's all a bit brown, yeah. I like a shade of beige. <laughs> the dish does balance. I just think it's a little high in tea. Okay. It doesn't yeah. need to be as intense as that. Yeah, I think you should use less tea in the infusion, and I think mm -hmm. you've got a real, a real good dish there. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Adele. It seemed like the flavour of it. Ish. Okay, you bring up your dish. I, I didn't actually get the apple sorbet on the plate, which was one of the components that I had specified. I might be in a bit of trouble. The things that did make the plate are deconstructed apple crumble and custard with roasted oatmeal ice cream and apple compote. 
there's a couple of things not on the plate. Um, there should have been a little Granny Smith sorbet there, which I didn't get finished. So what I did was I actually adjusted the, the mousse inside this to carry a bit more acidity, which was sort of replacing that. Now this is the ice cream. Roasted oatmeal ice cream. I think with the different elements, I don't know if it's because you're missing elements. I, I have a problem a lot of the time with these deconstructed concepts. Um, because often when they're deconstructed, they become something else. Um, and I don't think that this is apple crumble as such. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't remind me of it. But it's not meant to replicate traditional apple crumble. Okay, but that, that is something else. Then. The sorbet is missing, so it, it needs more apple, doesn't it? Yeah. So you lack apple. And what you said you were about to cook is not what's in front of us, so that's my observation. Sure. The brief was something Irish, and this is something else. My opinion is there's actually quite a long list of ingredients. There's a lot of processes. Uh... A lot of processes, yeah. And then I was thinking, I actually just want you to, to be simpler. And I just wish you'd just let yourself go and just cook something really decent that tastes amazing. Thanks. Thanks, you. I overreached on the dish, and it might be a case if I get through it's just to completely reassess the way that I'm looking at the competition. I could be going home, I think. Sonia, if you'd like to come up, please. Continuing the deconstructed theme, Sonia has cooked a Dublin coddle with venison sausage. I was happy enough with it. I thought the flavours were good. You happy with it? Yeah. Are you positive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I like the idea that you've taken the classic dish and you've sort of put your twist on it with the venison sausage. I love tripe. But it just, it's lacking a bit of salt, a bit of um, seasoning. The venison sausage is okay, but it, for me to be able to cut into that, I would get quite bored with it. I mean, it, it is what you've said it, it is. Um, they need to be better than the original. That's the whole point, is to taking it from something that's so humble and then bringing it to a new stage. I get the venison, the tripe, I think it's all good technique, but overall, it doesn't do it for me. Thank you. Of course, I'm a little bit disappointed, but we'll just wait and see. Nick and Dylan, I respect those two guys tremendously. You know, they they wouldn't be where they are uh, now if, if they didn't know what they were talking about. Rich's dish is roast rack of lamb served with bacon, cabbage and chorizo tartlet, champ, carrots and a red wine and rosemary reduction. Um, carrots were going to be honey glazed, did you say? Yeah, I didn't have time to finish those in the end, so I just okay. boiled them for a little bit. The lamb is cooked beautifully and then you poured all of that really heavy split red wine sauce over the top of it. The sauce actually ruins it, that a sauce will make or break a dish. Yeah. And in this case, it's broken it. Yeah, sure. It's just, um... I can't explain it without being harsh. Like, the reality is, that is just a boiled carrot. Yeah. And it tastes like a carrot. Yeah. But there's no love and attention to that. No, I just ran out of time at the end. It's just boiled carrots. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Thanks, Richard. Oh, I'm feeling a bit gutted. You know, I've had a bad day at the office and uh, it's not indicative of my level of cooking. It's really frustrating. Mark, if you're ready, please. I'm not feeling too confident. Just faltered on the cooking of the rabbit loin. It was uh, too much under for them to eat, so um, you're down a few points there straight away. But uh, I just have to hope they see something in me for the future and, you know, see a bit of potential and, and that's what keeps me in. The last of today's dishes is Mark's rabbit's leg braised in cider, bacon-wrapped loin, carrot puree and leeks. How are you feeling? Uh, not, not too happy with it. 
Okay, um, tell me, talk, talk us through it. Obvious problem is uh, the rabbit being, uh, loin being undercooked. It's one of the, you know, the key components of the dish, so. Shame. That's uh, very disappointing. Yep, it is a shame about the loin. It's undercooked, the leg is nice. It could have done more of the, the juices, made more of the sauce. It does, it does dry out. It does dry out. But nonetheless, there is something in you. You do have some ability there, some knowledge. And I think you, 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 you love being in the kitchen and you're a keen cook. So I think you're like a sponge, SpongeBob. You can absorb all that information. Yeah. And I think that's, that is a good thing to have. It's unfortunate about the loin because it's really held the dish back. So I can only eat half of it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Getting criticism like that uh, at this stage of the competition is it's hard to take because you you know that and anything any mistakes now you know it, it it means you could be gone. Well, Darren, it wasn't really what we were expecting. I think that their ideas were good. I think that everybody came to the table and tried to put their twist on something. Once they started cooking, is is when we ran into problems. Basically, today we just saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think. Everyone made mistakes today. Nobody's exempt. We're going to have to choose two out of the eight. Um, I think, knowing you by now, I think I know who your two are. Yeah. Some of the dishes that you gave us today surprised us and some disappointed us. You are all still learning the different elements that are needed to make a great dish. Today, we had to decide who we feel deserves to continue in the competition. The first person to leave the Master Chef kitchen is. Rich. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Cheers. Yeah, it's devastating, really, you know. It, it feels a bit unjust, you know, for me, um, knowing what I'm capable of. The next person to leave us is... Sonia. Thanks, Sonia. Thanks, Sonia. When I, I realised I was staying in there, I was pretty emotional, to be honest. And I didn't realise how much it meant to me until I realised that I was staying in the competition. Very emotional. As emotional as you'll see Derryman, I suppose. It was a very tiring journey. It was great. I had a lot of fun. Life goes on. <laughs> I wanted to learn from the guys that can really teach me in the best possible way. I love food. That's, that's why I'm here and uh, it's always been a massive part of my life and it, and it will be. Yeah, very disappointed to leave, but journey's over. Next time on MasterChef Ireland. You're about to receive the masterclass of a lifetime. Simple ingredients, cooked really well, that taste amazing. Somebody of that standard makes it look really, really easy. Looking at the people who are weakest because the other ones are starting to break away from the pack. Due to coverage of the state visit next Tuesday, there'll be a double helping of MasterChef on Wednesday night instead at 7.30 and 8.30. And you can tune in to Drive By with Colm Hayes tomorrow from 4.30 on 2FM to hear how Rich and Sonia took their eviction from the MasterChef kitchen. And speaking of evictions, lots of budding entrepreneurs are hoping not to escape the den as they pitch their products, wishing to get the dragons to part with their cash on Sunday at 9.30 here on RTE1.